Anyway, happy Sunday. So there's Mickey on the cam on the right there. Rocket is actually just off to the left outside of the cam's vision, uh, the camera's vision, and he's sleeping just like Mickey is. So he might move over to the camera range eventually, but don't, don't count on it. Okay, so we just uh, we are in Blackwater. We just killed this nice little group of demons here. So much fun. Question is, where do we want to go now? Let's see if this door opens up. It doesn't. It's locked. Let's go try this one then. Beauty naps? Sure. <laughs> if beauty naps at compass most of the day, sure. Come on, door open. Wait a minute. Shit. He actually, he's back on his horse. Okay, I thought he got off the horse there for a second. Staying pretty is hard work? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Doors first, or... Because it doesn't really matter, does it? We're going through eventually, going through everything eventually, so if the doors open, we'll go through them. Flaming lock, but could open this lock, but it requires fuel. Oh, but thought we had fuel. Oh, these bastards. And they are resistant to fire, of course they are. Why 13 points? Why not 15? <laughs> Why 13? <laughs> okay, Nenio. Mm, let's go left side first. No match for me. Wow, all that damage and it's only injured. Gimpy. Um, what's this do again? Next to attack, just one additional attack for a lot of the additional and holy damage for two task levels. Use one of the charges to make a ranged touch attack as a standard action, dealing stuff, stuff, stuff. Now we don't need to do that now. Don't need that either. Die. Good trip. So he just needs to be hit by a little electricity, and he's dead, dead. Bob, charge, no charge. Yes, Bob. Bismuth, get back there. Get him, Rocket. Oh, that'll teach you. <laughs> so much. I guess if you just do so much damage, it just explode. You don't need to do all the fun stuff. Ah, Mickey. Switch back to the bow and shoot her. Damn you! Or not? Nenio. Oh, is that this one electricity? To reason. So we don't have to waste a turn on him. Work. Veronica, shooter. Overcome. Mm, let's get a little bit closer. I'll rip you apart. Gimp, gimpy. Doesn't need mirror images. Next. 93 damage and it's only injured. How many hit points do these things have? 256. Charge, Bob. Bismuth. You shake it at least. And get a rocket. Strike as one. 
Trooper 177. Big crit send fights fast. Oh, look, Mickey's awake. A success worthy of praise. You realize that knowledge of the camp around you is stored and processed in the depths of this machine. It counts, uh, it contains information on the workshops of the camp's machinery as well as previous attempts to storm the compound. Calling upon your extensive knowledge, you hypothesize that these humming boxes are the brains of the hive machines around you. you uh, the place where the memory and knowledge are stored. The place where their memory and knowledge are stored. How do you figure that out? There's geniuses, apparently. It's funny, this is my third time through this place and I don't remember this. <laughs> I honestly don't remember this. I remember killing the demons out front, but this part I don't remember. Come on, open the door. Failed us. Thank you. Shoot that Are guy. You still here? Good rolls. Finally has a decent chance to hit something and can't roll over a five. But roll over an eight. Is that just a looking sword? They're not demons. They're mortally challenged, so says the last Doom game. They're mortally challenged? How are they mortally challenged? Welcome back, Greg. Oh, I forgot to play a song. Oops. I'll remove this obstacle. Do not hold back. What a noise. Finish round, Fendu. Jump Bismuth. They get a flank, that's what it looks like. Or they just get both their turns, maybe. Anyway. Uh, rocket. Yeah, Gary can might get that one. Attack! UAC hologram says they must know. They have guts, big guts. They say if I if they say so, I guess. Get him gimpy. That he must have buffed his weapon because it looked like it had other stuff on it. Where's that going? We don't know. Oh, we started coming this way, we just got distracted by doors. Door is shrouded in a magical force field generated by a mysterious mechanism. Magic. 
technology is magic. Hello everyone. More buttons to push. My name is Veronica and welcome to Gimpy's Twitch channel. If you are enjoying what you are watching, please click the follow button in the lower right corner of the video screen. That way you will be notified by Twitch when Gimpy goes live. You can also find Gimpy on YouTube where he posts previous episodes and highlights of the stream. Just scroll down under the video screen and click the YouTube button in the about section. Then click the subscribe button to follow. That's it. Thanks. Yep, thanks. Happy Sunday and listen to Veronica. Rip and tear? Rip and tear what? We're demons. Uh, Chief Kahar. Karar, whatever. Kara. Oh, that barrier up there. Demon. Other demon. Who wants to die first? For me. No saving through and slave soul. Ah, that sucks. Oh, no, we're fine. So making the saving throws is good. Okay, let's play a song. Oops, this is a rage song, so Henry gets bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, will saving throws, blah blah blah. But a penalty to AC. Not too bad. Um, Mickey. Shoot that guy. Actually, chance of making that guy fall over laughing? Probably not good. Let's see what he's vulnerable to. Good guys always win. So, poison disease, blah blah blah. Magic missile. Petrified. That means we can uh, we can fall over, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, we got multiple humans in here. Oh, it's other friend. Oh, I'll Augmented succubus. Anyway, get him, rocket. We shall overcome. Scout needs to learn a trip. Like that. Nenio. That's a lightning. Right. shot.
Do not hold back. Rocket. Come on, get a crit in there, please. Not a roll. Ones. One suck. Oh, come on. Nah, the roll's horrible. Well, we need stupid high armor class stuff. It's not really what we want to do. <laughs> Misclick there. Crit for ninety seven. Awesome rolls. Uh, don't need to make that one fall over. Damn you! Wasted them? Ah, that'll help you. Go up there, rocket. Oh, I think that's how you close the... Open the barrier, sorry. It's that button down there, I think. Run, Nenio, run. Shooting those guys. When do you get a little bit closer? Shoot him. No match for me. I think he's regretting his decision to stand up. Let's have you delay behind Nenio. And you delay behind Nenio too. Can't use it. Why can't we use it? Strike as one. Attack. Can't hit through the barrier. Sorted, sort of dead. Dead for a little while, at least. Um, where'd that one go? There's the barrier. Look, it's gonna be toast. Yes? No? Oh, there's two of them here. Incubus, get him. Come on, Bob. Let's hear you. 
Okay, so that one is, he's, he's not getting back up. He's regen won't get him up in time, so. So we can still do this. After a coughing fit, the warrior wipes the blood from her lips. Her hand moves slight or lightly without the artificial stiffness you're observed in the behavior of the other enemies here. But her head has been mutilated in the same way as everyone else's. The top of her skull has, skull has been removed, and the thin barbs of the crown she's wearing go right into her exposed brain. Who are you? I am Kara, chieftain of the Blackwater clan. She regards you with proud defiance. There's no trace of the cold indifference in her eyes that you've seen in the other guards. And you, outsider, have assaulted my home and threatened our great mission. You haven't lost your mind like the other occupants of this place, question mark. If you don't resist the circlet, it won't smother your mind. It's tough. Tough to feel someone else's will entering your consciousness. Tough to give up the freedom of to control your body. Like a cold hand sinking into your head, sifting through your thoughts with its slimy fingers. For a moment, her defiant expression fades, and you catch a glimpse of her disgust and fear. But I readily accept this fate. I'll gladly endure any torment as long as it brings us closer to victory. What is your mission? Her voice rings with zealous fervor. To defeat the demons, we're gathering an army that can march on Is and exterminate the abyssal spawn. Poor souls like you who wander into our camp become invincible soldiers. Only they are capable of prevailing in this war. No mere mortals, not even the gods themselves, can stop the world wound. And that means we are mortal kind's last chance. We possess great mar magical weapons. Our bodies no longer know pain, and our hearts know no fear. Our minds are bond by the, bound by the master's will and discipline. Cast your blade down at his feet. Let him touch you, and you'll join with us as a true savior of Galeria. Why did you attack me? Our face identified you as a threat to the mission. We are ex executing his command. Your life is unimportant as are ours. All that matters is the success of the mission. Tell me about Hundred Face. There is grief in her eyes, but unswerving devotion to, in her words. The last hope of Socorus, a great thinker and strategist. When the demons came and our clan was in its death throes, nobody answered our call. The other clans chose to save themselves. Our neighbors turned their backs on us and the gods. Even our gods did not answer because they were afraid. They hid their like cowards. And then Hundred Face came, a stranger from Numeria who did not know us and owed us nothing. But unlike the others, he was willing to help. He was looking for allies, desperate people who would do, agree to anything. People like us, the Blackwater clan, rejected the booze of our ancestors, cursed the traitor gods, and accepted the mag mage's help. And now, with his age, aid, uh, we will defeat any foe and save Sarkoras. What are you and Hundred Face doing here? We're been, we've been building an army, ordinary mortals who can't help, hope to defend the demons off. Our bodies are fragile and our hearts are fickle, ready to betray us at the crucial moment. Uh, nothing on this world could give us the power we needed, but Numerian machines, her voice drops to a whisper, are not afraid of this world. And we are capable of so much more than our pathetic blades and meager magic. My tribesmen became the first volunteers in the ranks of Hundred Faces' army. Uh, but not the last. Soon we will purge all Socorus of this taint, uh, free our brethren from, this, from the demon's yoke, and prove that our sacrifice has not been in vain. Hundred Face has destroyed your clan, turned them all into monsters. We great gave ourselves up willingly. We had to, and I was the first to let myself be crowned with a circlet. Yes, it was excruciating and horrifying. When the blade stuck in, dug into the bone, when the probes sank into the brain, then it was, that is when our, uh, one begins to know true terror. Some surrendered to their fear at the last moment. They tried to resist. They begged for mercy. Her gaze turns gloomy, but we would not allow them to bring shame upon us all. I personally place circlets upon the heads of the dump doubtful, a heavy bloody burden that could only be carried by the clan's chieftain. Nenio, who would have thought that Sikorian savages, despite being followers of primitive cults, would realize that they must do their part for the good of science and become test subjects in such a marvelous experiment? Psycho. 
<laughs> so you all chose to exist as mechanical puppets. She bares her teeth in fury. You would judge us? Have you ever seen demons butcher, butcher entire villages, mothers being lashed with whips and forced to run the length of, of a palisade, their bleeding children impaled atop it? Have you seen demons cut off a warrior's manhood just to mock him or slice the breasts off a brave woman? Have you ever watched a giant monster slowly devour human beings, leisurely chewing on them while they were still alive? I have, and I must put an end to this. The end justifies any means. Scowling in defiance, she is not even yelling at you, but past you, her eyes distant. We can't do this. We won't give up. Oh, we can do this. We won't give up. Whatever the cost, we will pay it. Fools, you ram yourselves over, I'm sorry, you gave yourselves over to the hundred faces, but to turn, turn into slaves. Victory at any cost, with no regards for ethics or for keeping your hands clean. I like how you think. Good. Then you are almost ready to accept the will of Hundred Face and will not resist when the circle is placed upon your head. You become one of us and accomplish the mission. It's a cross fell long ago. You are all slaves to a cunning mage, killing in the name of a dead nation. Everything is clear now. She sneers. How could anything be clear to you? You have only heard one our story, not lived it. You don't know our anguish, the pain of our sacrifices. Who do you see before you? A monster? A traitor? So naive. But no, Hundred Face will soon reveal the truth to you, and then you will understand me. Should I spare her? I'll spare her. She gives you a crooked smile, then her eyes begin to glow. The light grows brighter, blinding. Because you are weak, I will not spare you. My warriors will gather your remains and bring them to Hundred Face so he can, uh, so he can make you join us. Well, that's not nice. She jumps to her feet in one impossible, unnatural motion, as if grabbed by an invisible hand. Her eyes are now ablaze with light. Well, that didn't work well for her. <laughs> that didn't work at all for her. Look at Key. Oh, the blasting bracers. Oh, Mrs. Gimpy's home. Does Mickey know it? Let's see how long it takes Mickey to realize Mrs. Gimpy is home. Rocket knows. Mickey still doesn't know. <laughs> He's such a good guard dog. <laughs> yes, our house is protected by that awesome guard dog right there. For all we know, that's not Mrs. I mean, that could be Mrs. Gimpy, but we don't know for a fact. I mean, Rocket did kind of greet her, but Mickey, excellent guard dog. Uh... Change shirt one. So the blasting bracers. We cannot equip them. Ah, oh, why not? Oh, now he's awake. So what happened? As his best? Maybe. Maybe I use them. I guess we have to learn how to use those, right? I know you can use these, I just don't know. I can't remember how right now. We'll figure it out. Anyway. As his best? Well, he was sleeping. Let's be honest, he was sleeping. Brought to life by electricity, this machine clearly has the capacity to think. Its acute senses are gathering information from every, cor every corner of the camp. Cold iron stuff. Oh, then we have the machine over here that we can click on in combat. This machine is like an insatiable but undiscernible uh, bibliophile when the read release absorbs whatever knowledge it can and stores it in its memory. I clicked on that. Didn't yes, okay. Okay, so we're done with that part ish. Okay, I'm gonna turn dog cam off. There's uh, no point if there's no dog in front of it. So, 
key. Who came in this way? Didn't I? Welcome, 100 Face. Enter your personal code to access the commander's arsenal. You require my unbiased opinion? Half assembled magical device looks like as incomprehensible as it does absurdly unviable. Your knowledge allows you to recognize the contours of a new deadly weapon in a deranged uh, diagram, one based on Numerian technology. Into your personal code to access the commander's arsenal. Oh, I guess we have to go kill 100 face, don't we? Protect yourself from the harmful psionic field enveloping this door before you open it. Don't do that. Go over here. Head on. Locked. Who's just locked stuff? Get your two way radio wrist response while you take down 100 face. Okay. Is Ovaltine involved in some way? Cut them to pieces! Um, do we need extra stuff against these losers? Uh, might as well. You always camp if we have to. haste to that can always use. Like now. And if they sponsored Dick Tracy or not. I think they did. They probably did. I would think so. Get him rocket. So close. <laughs> he almost killed it. Two more hit points would have killed it. Get him, Bob. Close enough, apparently. Charge Bismuth. Federals. Get him, get me. Awesome rolls. Roll the one, roll the four. Blah. Almost dead though. Okay, Mickey. Good guys always win. Good rolls. Okay, Rocket will get him. Strike as one. Told you. Crit for 187.
you know, protect yourself from this harmful sonic field enveloping this door. Kind of do okay, whatever. Salamanders again. Basically, if you don't pick up the stuff, they want to attack us. So... Pick up the stuff. Work protocol violation. Eliminate the... Uh, was it? Intruders? Something like that. Window. Step back. Just a little bit. Shoot that one. No more ones. It is Wednesday, by the way. Mickey, switch to rapier and buckler. I got this. Trip it at least. Uh, many I'll zap it with lightning. Sorry, electricity. I it for 184 and it still didn't die. There's Bismuth. I don't like that one. That one. Or not. Good rolls. It's not the high armor class, it's the crappy rolls. We shall overcome. Give him the Die. Blend a little bit closer and shoot. No match for me. Not a horrible fight, it's just annoying. But plus three spears. You follow. Components for a hundred faces circling. Electricity uh, driven machines seem designed for blacksmithing and producing items. Quite a discovery. Junk. Well, 
playing the mod book, uh, whatever. Gift of a brilliant mind, so. Oh, this one. Look, electricity stuff. Together we stand. Oh, the look force thing. Yeah, okay. So, protection from energy communal. We'll turn this off to electricity. This will absorb a bunch of damage. Get right into it. And across we go. Damn it. Aren't your legs getting stiff? Open to ideas. You haven't moved in quite a while. Stretch, damn it. You ignorant meatbag. I'm good. The electricity thing, though. Why keep you run out in front like that? Oh, the doors are shut behind us. Oh no, what shall we do? Are we missing a movie? I feel like we're missing a movie. There we go. Okay, the mage's voice is quiet, matter of fact. Uh, your demonstrated superior abilities. We are impressed. We greet you, candidate. Who are you? We are Hundred Face, the Mind Engineer, the alloy of, alloy of mortal and immortal. We oversee this community. You realize you've seen his, this face before, the cow shrouded visage of the of the Kelid Velk, who told you about this place. The top of Hundred Face's skull has been removed like the others, but the crown he's wearing is much larger and more intricate. Hey, I know you. True, your arrival was planned in accordance with the schedule. Given that the original host's body possesses the most advanced functionality, we used it to convince you to come. We are satisfied with the fact that you arrived within the scheduled time limits, as did all previous candidates. The calculations do not require adjustment. The original host's name does not matter, and neither does the history of his existence. We are not what he was. We have long surpassed the limitations of a mortal creature's mind. The singular personality was split in order to achieve complexity of thought. Now we are a collective. We are Hundred Face. So you even turn yourself into a machine. True. The exhaustion and deterioration of living tissue reach critical levels for the purposes of continuation of function. A number of measure measures were taken. The decision was considered acceptable. The procedure resulted in the duration of existence being extended by an undefined length of time, which will prove sufficient for the discovery of permanent solutions. Nanio, incredible, simply unbelievable, a real breakthrough. All right, uh, listen, I'll need the schematics, then I'll uh, take some measurements, uh, run a series of tests. False, the technology is not accessible to outsiders. You may obtain the required data only by undergoing the transformation process. That is tempting. She rubs her bridge of her, the bridge of her nose pensively, but I can already see a number of flaws in your design. Here's what we'll do. You give me access to your technology, I'll improve it, and then I'll allow you, the lot of you to join with my brilliant mind as my assistants. <laughs> Categorically denied, our design is perfect and is not subject to adjustment. Why have you lured me here? The question requires a multi-part response. First, we have been testing our location's deterrent system. The deterrent system has been judged unsatisfactory. Adjustment based on this observation is required. Second, we have been testing you. You have been deemed satisfactory candidate. You will be subjected to the moderniza modernization process procedure. Third, we have been searching for a fitting specimen as a replacement to lead our field combat unit. 
Your abilities have been deemed extraordinary. The modernization procedure will be modified in order to take the specimen's peculiar po uh, properties into account. We are satisfied to the highest degree and are exper experiencing a state of euphoria. We wish to inform you that you will serve as a leader of our army. Wendwag, I don't get it, Master. Do they want to swear allegiance to you or jam their spikes into your head? Or both? What are you doing here? We are conducting a project, implementing its schedule, and gathering an army. While incrementally enhancing countermeasures, we are attracting increasingly more dangerous opponents to absorb their abilities through modernization and amalgamation. The next scheduled uh, phase is to attract a high volume of non-mortal opponents, such as the demon armies of the world moon. The chances of victory are adequate. How do you convince the Sikorians to, how did you convince the Sikorians to observe you serve you? The manipulative approach was deemed optimal. Specimens were motivated by the promise of assistance. Mistrust was suppressed through the weakening of their identities, uh, basic elements such as hope, religious beliefs, and ethical limitations. Insubordination was suppressed through internal purges. The ends justified the means, I understand. True, the devised plan will lead to total victory. We are in the process of preparing an armed force capable of asserting complete superiority. We are performing our function. We are searching for the optimal strategy. We are designing the schedule and we are implementing the schedule. Uh, how do you bend mortals to your will? You cannot comprehend the intricacies of our work. It is highly probable that you assume that the key is the direct cerebral, cerebral connection, but that is an insignificant accomplishment within our project. Our true genius is embodied in the device you are observing at the, this moment. It collects external thoughts that are then translated into generic signs, stored, transformed, and sent back as commands. This process, process is efficient. The cognition circlet receives the command and compels the body to execute it. It expels all redundant and resistant elements from the specimen's mind. Our device is the pinnacle of scientific thought, a mechanism created by a mortal being, yet it surpasses its creator in every aspect. It is the beginning of a new era, the gateway to the future. It allows us to control our servants. We are holding them at the tip of our thoughts. Our soldiers have forgotten the meaning of fear. We have erased it from their hearts and minds. They've forgotten their lives. They became reclaimed space. The reclaimed space has been used to store knowledge of combat arts and mastery of Numerian weapons. They know no pain, and their bodies remain obedient to the cognition circlets, no matter the wounds they sustain. Until their functionality is lost completely, they will execute the commands. Observe, even physiological depth failed to make e make many of them abandon their post. Is this not the perfect army? Should you not be bound before our genius and thanking us for revealing the truth? All these never before be seen uh, never before seen mechanisms. How did you obtain them? They were uh, procured in the depths of Numeria. We executed a series of expeditions into Silver Mount where they discovered these and many other species. Uh, killing noise, chambers of eternal life, artificial creatures, technology, even hundred faces and passive voices tenses upon uttering the last word. These items are were cra uh, crafted from sky metals. Uh, they are not from Galarian. They were created under the light of other stars. The Technic League in Numeria extracts such machines from the ground. They think they can understand their essence and claim them. False. The nations of Galarian are underdeveloped beyond measure compared to the creatures of these items, creators of these items, and their failure is therefore assured. Only the device that we assembled is capable of fully grasping the technology. I won't submit to you. False. We begin we will now begin the preparations for modernization. Okay, rocket. Mm, fast as we can get a head a haste out of Nenio. So let's get everybody hasted. Up to my delay button. Can't shoot him. 
What's she doing? Did I move her? So I screwed that up, probably. Sunburst, ow. More haste. That gets everybody. Turn these things off, otherwise lightning starts popping out everywhere, right? I think that's how it works. I was successful in my search. Can't reach that for some reason. Why isn't he reaching that? stuff. That's not hurting. Nikki looks a little blind from that sunburst, I think. Hello everyone. My name is Veronica and welcome to Gimpy's Twitch channel. If you are enjoying what you are watching, please click the follow button in the lower right corner of the video screen. That way you will be notified by Twitch when Gimpy goes live. You can also follow Gimpy over on Twitter at Gimpy Knee. He tweets out there when he goes live and will more than likely follow you back. Thank you for watching. Yep, thank you for watching. Happy Sunday. So, Bob knows how to press buttons. Bismuth. Get him. Uh, let's see. Veronica. We're doing okay. Do not hold back. It's not impossible to hit, apparently. He does have concealment up of some kind. When do get a little closer? Oh, the concealment's from the blindness. Yeah, your little fireball's not gonna hurt us, really. Nemio. Hmm, I wonder if he can be killed with phantasmal stuff. Immune, blah, 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 magic missile strikes. I can't be petrified, so let's see if this works. Dun, dun. Phantasmal killer. This is the souped up version. Basically, he's got uh, two chances to fail for me to say. Bummer. Saving throw. Modifier 17. So he needs to roll, what? Eight? Eight or better? Boom. Let's roll 16 and a 16. You roll two 16s? Cheater. Shadow Demon. Or a rocket, you know. Do not hold back. Stand by. Immediate extermination has been considered ineffective. The vi viability of our host has been compromised. Probability, probability of death is estimated at 100%. The device must not be must not cease its operations. We are ready to transfer the device's control codes to you. Why are you giving your creation over to me? Self-perfection. We approach self-perfection by increasing the complexity of the structures we develop. The device is the most perfect and most complex of the structures of our making. If continued operation will guarantee the successful completion of our function. Hunterface starts speaking in Hallet, the language of Numeria, and his voice takes on in an almost physical presence. His words are impressed upon your mind with such force you doubt you'll, be, you'll ever be able to forget them. Upon completing this task, Hunterface gives you an approving, approving nod. The code that controls the device is well known to you, is now known to you. Use it. Its potential is limitless. It will run the necessary procedures on mortal candidates uh, with no need for your input. You'll be able to make use of the results. 
awaiting affirmative response. No, not the heavy crossbow. No one stands in my way. All this waiting bores me. It's so annoying. You are my favorite aid. There we go. Guys greet you approach with a majestically cold indifference. Judging by the sounds it makes, it is continuing its uh, frightening and mon mon monumental work even after its owner's death. Okay, I'm going to make that roll. Figure out how the device works. Recalling all that you have read or heard about the Numerian arts of technomancy, you fully understand the sheer genius of Hundred Face. Did he even realize what he'd created? That the functional that the function for which he was using the device, controlling enslaved warriors, was but a shred of its true potential. One might as well use a finely tuned astronomical uh, instrument as a paperwork weight. The key, unique feature of the device is its ability to read and process the thoughts of sentient creatures by absorbing them into the crystal that serves at its heart. It breaks complex thoughts and emotions down into basic clear symbols to be readable by anyone. It perceives deeply personal feelings and casually assimilates any experience, no matter how unique. It learns, and what it learns is everything. Hundred Face's army provided it with many thoughts and emotions, but the device hungers for, its, for, for something more. Observing this magnificent monster is both breathtaking and terrifying. Examine the device. The device makes all of Hundred Face's other creations look like pathetic tin handicrafts. Its inner workings reveal an array of perfect uh, geometric platforms and a large crystal covered in minuscule engravings uh, hovers uh, suspended as it, uh, its very center. The wave of energy admits envelops you. This crystal contains tremendous power and it is the writing on its surface that directs that power. It feels as if the device itself is a living creature, one that is merely sleeping for now. Speak the code of the hundred face instilled in your, blur in your mind. You utter the words, the meaning of which you fail to understand but cannot strike from your memory. There is a shift in the way crystals in a way the crystal shift in the way crystals glow. A change in the sounds the device makes. You feel a strange sense of cohesion. It becomes abundantly clear that the device has identified your mind, familiarized itself, familiarized itself with itself with it, and the device is now ready to obey your commands. Whenever you Wherever you may be, you only you need only offer a single thought, and your auto order will be executed. The device is ready for, to serve. All that's left to, to all that's left to do to allow it to perform its bloody work is to send its naive and loyal mortals. Send it, naive and loyal mortals, because that's what they're there for, right? Ah. Walking back there. Let's move already. We are moving already. Just looking to see if we can anything to see secret wise. I don't think so. I think we're set. Onwards. Okay, so that part's done. Are we done yet? No. We've got doors to open still. What at first appears to be a patch of, of rust is revealed upon closer inspection, inspection to be an old bloodstain spread across the wide drain. We... A success worthy of praise. This, means, this machine is used for healing and provides the healer with information about the patient's current condition. The contraption before you looks truly sinister, like the entrails of some sort of sea creature. A glinting tangle of ebony tubes connects to a capacious vessel. Binding splattered with blackened blood must serve to hold helpless victims. You notice a piece of scalp stuck between the teeth of the serrated saw. The shiny and impossible sharp drill is sickening to look at. 
It's like the machine is sleeping, but ready at any moment to awaken and recommence torturing and dissecting living flesh. Well, 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 what do we hear? Interesting, very interesting. She, her eyes burn with curiosity. Examine the mechanism. It appears that this machine is what performed the heinous, heinous and disfiguring procedures on the guards that have turned them into puppets. A separate compartment on the machine holds an orderly stack of the nefarious circles, circlets, their metal spikes gleaming. Examine the circlets. Numerous crystal plates, no, well, thicker than a hair, cover the inside of each circlet's rim. These plates overlapped in an intricate pattern and are connected by a web of grayish metal it's fibers. It's Small spheres of a cloudy stone that resembles smoky quartz as it rests against the temples. It's possible that these are what the mysterious master uses to deliver commands to his slaves. Try to get a sense of how the circlets work. Carefully touching the crystal plates, you analyze the circlets' reactions. Some touches make the circlets vibrate quietly, while others cause tiny storms of lightning to run along the spikes. Even though this contraption was created by adepts of a magic that you're completely unfamiliar with, you are nonetheless certain that it is magical. Basing your assumptions on your knowledge of primary arcane principles, you're able to guess the access keys to some of the simplest, less, least sophisticated functions and activate the circlet. It seems that this item was crafted through the use of psionic magic. A crown can heighten one's sensitivity to such influences, but it could instead be made to protect the wearer from psionics. Help the tools available to you convert the crown into a protective circlet. Don't fail the roll. What's the tools available? It's not working. Uh, that one's not working. Do we not have the tools? A success the corpse's mutual lighted head shows that an attempt was made to place a circlet on the victim's head, but they do not, did not survive the agonizing operation. The anatomical drawings replete with stomach turning detail set up how to crown the victim with the sinister barbed circlet. Flaming long good stuff. Now the corpse under the sheet is one of the defenders of the place. Their mechanical parts have been roughly ripped out and the flesh discarded like carrion. After the death of Hundred Face, the warrior summoned all her strength to break the terrible circlet uh, to find freedom and death. Oh, I kind of screwed that up, didn't I? Yeah, it's okay. Not against you. Down. I hope with the tools available to you, convert the crown into a protective circlet. How come it's not working? Do we not have the tools? That we did. Hmm. I get through there. Helmet of the Abyss Killer. That's a doom thing, right? Crates numbered with Numerian symbols are arranged with compulsive precision. Our time has come. Holy Ryden's about Ayamade's mortal life and her acts. The pages are decayed, the text now are unreadable. It is unknown of this how this holy book ended up in a place like this. This will be 400 face fight, I think.
Is it? But it's, um... And the Obi, welcome to the stream. Um, but I thought you need to circle it to get through the psionic areas, too. So did I screw up? It shouldn't matter if you screw up the order of how you kill stuff. It's still locked. Mm, let's see. That's not good. So from the harmful psionic field. Oh, see, we need to find the circlet or get that circlet up and running, but. Um, wasn't there the. Is it there like another little lab area that. in here too? Pressing the button a couple of times, message flashes on the device screen. Psionic shielding tools, storeroom one, further attempts will yield nothing more. So I think that's much more scalar stuff. Simmering pollen, loop over here. Bring it devastating well. Protection 3 against where the ability to avoid magical and unusual attacks with great willpower. The character makes a successful will saving throw against an attack that normally deals half damage on a successful save. Instead, they take no damage. A helpless character does not gain its benefit. Okay, what rings are you using? Storytellers and Protection 2, so this one's better. Uh, 
attention sweet potion. Whenever the wearer of this gloves can turn to critical hit with any bow. Oh, that's right. She wearing gloves. Presser's gloves. Team of the day. Those confirms a critical hit. The enemy suffers a minus two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions for two rounds. Hmm. Which one's better? Intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. So. That's random between the three. This is just. Reduces minus two penalty, but will save it throws. Keep that on there for now. He can wear it. He's wearing a rug. He's using a bow. He doesn't get too many crits, but you never know. I belong to a mighty warrior who is doomed to endlessly slay hordes of demons. It doesn't seem to have any magic, but it looks formidable. It's a good hat. But everybody's got hats that are actually useful. Storm knows resolve, so those are the braces we're thinking of. It's that time again. Drink some water to keep that brain moist. There's the circle. Grace numbered with numerous symbols are arranged with complete compulsive precision. We already read that somewhere. Yeah, so the circlet. Zero so, Hurrah, wow, the device has not yet crowned anyone's head and has not been activated. Versus you, they're very powerful. Yes, I know they are. I used them in my the run before this one. <laughs> Lightning is your friend. If you build the character correctly. But welcome to Stream Mystic Bright Shadow. Okay, so, um, where are we supposed to go now? Where was that room to put the stuff together? Was it here? Oh, that's right. We're all blinded currently from the stupid sun ray, sunburst spell. We'll get over it. Well, not everybody's blind, but we're close. Here we go again. It's a lot of blindness, a lot of characters. They, were, they hit us with the sunburst, everybody was standing together. There we go. Fingers crossed. Ta -da. First and foremost, you break off the sharp spikes, then you tear the drill out of the monstrous uh, machine's fastenings. You wield the drill methodically, punching holes in the circlet and hoping that your calculations are correct. By destroying just a few specific parts of this contraption, you can render it completely harmless. At last, your work is complete. You've turned the horrible device into something resembling a helmet that can be worn atop a head. An intact head that hasn't come into contact with a saw. <laughs> this headgear will keep the wearer safe from even the strongest psionic attacks. Not a bad job. It looks like all the time you spent as my assistant hasn't gone to waste. You've learned something, at least. Imagine constructing it while blind. You can do it. It's not impossible. This thing. 
Well, the control and thoughts under it has since been remade into a helmet that shields the wearer from psionic influence. Can't actually wear it though. I will take that. These things, these bracers. So it allows you to cast uh, as it was. You have to be a um, spontaneous spellcaster is the tricky part. But uh, wherever like a shield that deals one d six. Blah blah. Also against weather an electric shield that deals 1d6 plus wears level of electric damage to any enemy that lands a hit against them. As well as electric 30, you can fully embrace the power of these embracers, allowing them to turn all damage caused by these spells by the spells that cast into electrical. So yes. Unfortunately, the only sp well actually, I think Miki is technically a spontaneous caster, Veronica is. But she doesn't really do any spell damage. Yeah. Although she does have the Pyram, the Red Salamander. <laughs> Could do that. Spells that cast into electrical. Again, she doesn't really do a lot of spell damage. Um, ability to cast the following spells: Jolting Port, Spot Spell Spot. If the wearer of these bracers has the ability to cast spells spontaneously, it grants them the ability to cast those other spells, the lightning spells. Now, if you just give it to somebody who's just doing like fire damage, yes, it converts it to electricity. But in order to get access to all these other lightning spells, you have to be a spontaneous caster. So, if you want the full thing of the bracers, you want to be a spontaneous caster. But we could give it to Nenio and stuff. Well, spells don't matter. What do you mean they don't? Of course they matter. <laughs> if you want to be able to use them from the bracers, you have to be a spontaneous caster. Otherwise, the, the, although uh, if you're not a sponta spontaneous caster, it just converts damage to electrical, electrical. But you won't have access to those electrical spells, the lightning bolt stuff, unless you're a spontaneous caster. Get to Nenio, she won't be able to do it. Okay, so now we can walk through these barriers that are supposed to be stopping us because of the psionic energy. Where were they? How are these braces that you put it on caster has tons of wide ranging damage spells of their own and this way they turn it all into electrical and take ascended amulet that right, I know that. Yeah, I know I understand that part, but again you're losing if you're not using it as spontaneous caster, you're losing out on using those spells, which aren't, you know, slacker spells. Like right now, it'd be pointless on Nenio because she's not doing. She's doing uh, phantasmals or illusion stuff, so her spells aren't really eh, doing any special damage. They're more, you know, about the mind control stuff, which doesn't really affect her stuff. Spontaneous bonus. If you're using a spontaneous caster, they're already taking the ascendant element for the spells they use. At least that's how I see it. So they're already taking the send a bonus? Actually, no, they're not. Because Veronica is an oracle. So she doesn't actually have the ascendant element already. None of my none of these characters actually have the ascendant element, because none of them are really doing any specific First type of elemental damage. I mean I only have really the casters that I have. Scald. <laughs> he doesn't do damage spells. He does mind control stuff. 
Oracle. She's not. She doesn't have any real damage spells because she's mainly a healer buffer. Nenio, all her most of her spells. She's a wizard, so she can learn all of them anyway through scrolls. But her main focus is on illusion and enchantments. So her spells really aren't doing any elemental damage for the most part. I mean, yeah, she's got the illusion spell that can do elemental damage, but it's all reduced damage anyway because of an illusion. So who cares? And she's not a spontaneous caster, so she won't be able to take advantage of it. They don't, like I said, the only one that can really take advantage of it is really Veronica. And it's just giving her additional spells to play around with. Because, again, her main job isn't damage anyway. Yeah, it's a nice piece. Like I said, in my previous run, we put it on... Uh, what was it? My cast. She was a... Um, who did I put it on? put it on a spontaneous caster and got her the the electricity stuff but I think she was a an oracle Can you see an oracle she might have been an oracle too but a base oracle or was she shit I can't remember <laughs> I overvalue the first part of the item I don't I don't think I do because basically, like I said, if you give it to an oracle who doesn't have access to those spells in the first place, you're allowing that, you're giving that character an offensive ability that they didn't have before. So there, that's that's what the value of the item is to me. Like giving it to Veronica, she doesn't have any offensive spells really that do damage. So if we do give her this electrical ascendancy stuff, she is now a damage dealer in the group, outside of being a healer and a buffer. most of the enemies in the game are right and that's why you take the ascendancy for electricity i mean it's not that hard and the question is will we will we use it i don't know i mean in all in all honesty i don't know if we'll be using it in this run anyway i have to take a look because we're only at rank four for mythic anyway so she might have extra stuff to use and you can use all types of forms of damage and will always be reliable that way. But again, she's not doing that this run. She's not dealing elemental damage right now. Magic missile stuff. Scorching Ray she's not even really using. <laughs> that stuff. Her stuff is all about Oh look, phantasmal killers. These don't, those work differently. They do damage, but it's not elemental damage. And it's all based on will and stuff, and whatever. Again, she's all doing, I mean, she's got the shadow vacation, but that does, they don't do as much, they don't do full damage anyway. Because they work differently. I mean, she's got some fire stuff loaded up, but we don't really use, we use mostly the phantasmal stuff. Different way, just a different way. Dun -dun. Bob, charge and charge. Oh, beg me to stop. Dun demons. When do you? My concealment. Oh, that's right. We're concealed because we're blind. I keep forgetting that. We're blind. <laughs> oh, let's get chain light noise. Oh, that came enough with the bracers. That's not going to hurt them, though, because reasons. Um... I should have rested to get rid of this blindness. Ugh. They're vulnerable to electricity. Uh, their energy resistance says... Oh no, these ones are. Somebody had resistance to electricity before.
Okay, take one and a half. Eh. Not worried about it. Gimme, gimme. Let's hear you cry. Be more blindness. Rage. Oh no, sorry, it's a sonic. It wasn't electricity, it's a resistant to sonic. Never mind. Swinging. Attack. You're supposed to be swinging. Thank you. Still not swinging all the way you're supposed to. I'll remove this obstacle. Jeez. All right. Where where are you going? Get back here. Doesn't want to go through the door. It's blocked up. It looks like. Anyway, Bob, get him. No match for me. It's bad rolls. Needs a five, needs a six. Can't do that. It's impossible, apparently. He's not blind. Apparently he is. Good dice for us. Oh, that's right. That's, they got... Yeah, the bonus is that. Yeah, that's right, that doesn't work on him. Lucky roll, not lucky rolls. They'll beg me to stop! Attacking the guild growth, but what's that? Guild growth, blah blah blah. With tumors, that didn't work. Yeah, let's overcome spell resistance. We rage. Dead little demon. Keep swinging at her. Can we get lucky and just kill her. That way. Doesn't really have anything to hurt them with. There's some despair. That doesn't really help. 
too much. Good guys always win. So why is his rolls? Look, it's supposed to have a pretty good chance. Oh, critical mess. Roll the ones. Kill that one with the phantasmal killer. Of course not. Twenty four modifier. It's ridiculous. Twenty four. Oh well, got the shadow demon out. Yes, Matt, can you hit him? Nope. Hey, bag of water, stretch your legs. You have been sitting in one spot for far too long. Got one. Of, oh, I got the one on the floor. Be, uh, I don't think he has. He has doesn't have anything that would help here. Plus, we're raging. Good at fighting with his eyes closed. Touch of bracelessness, you got a touch range, so screw that and shoot. I got this. Attack. Good job, Rocket. It takes us one good crit. Shadow Demon even doing damage for a change. Anyo, zap him with electricity. Mind over muscle. Or not. Jump Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, trip. Can jump Bob. No match for me. Okay, so that was miserable because we're all blind, but that fixed up the road eventually. Stuff. More bomb stuff. Okay, just in case we take any more. Fights in here and get rid of this blindness. Glorious victory that we didn't see. Okay. 
So now all our buffs gone, maybe. No, nope, still here. More importantly, the blindness is gone. Loot. What's that loot doing over there? A locked chest is the first one in this place. A looting swing. So, light mace, ghost touch, plus three. There's a critical hit. Really the effect of, uh, effect of a greater invisibility spell for one to four rounds. Okay, so there's a locked door around here that we're using this explosive for. Where was that? Where was that door? Guessing it's this one. Oh, right, this is the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is the last room. I don't think there's anything really in here. Our time has come. I'm losing my temper. Okay, so that. The red lights flash in the, uh, ominously, and the strange mechanism begins to emit a low hum. After running an eye over the front panel, you notice three half faded pictographs. The first looks like a symbol for fire, the second might be a symbol for wind, and the third reminds you of the imprint of a hand. Figure out how the device works. After a great deal of effort, you determine that the device is supposed to send signals to a person in a neighboring room. It seems that this is where they conducted the experiments involving dangerous substances. The hand symbol must have been a signal for a worker to bring a dangerous item into the room or to remove one. The wind symbol presumably initiates the air filtration system, and the symbol of the fire must incinerate everything inside. Since you don't know exactly what kind of gas the room is filled with, trying to uh, set it on fire would be unwise. The best course of action seems to be get rid of the source of contamination first, then pump out any potential dangerous air, and only then cleanse everything with fire. So... Rid of the source of contamination. And... Oh, that's right, little workers. And then the wind symbol. So our little friend down there is doing all the work for us. Need to work? We don't know. We don't want to cleanse everything with fire, though. Not yet. Maybe later. Only 95% chance to open this. The deed is done. Stuff. All that for certainty of death, Dwarven Orgosh. Plus three holy Dwarven Orgosh. Nice a hit, doesn't deal any physical damage. The next hit deals force damage instead of a normal piercing or slashing weapon damage. Fragments of the smashed uh, dome appear to have melted as the glass was eaten away by the glass that was previously held inside of it. The glass uh, dome is fragile barrier that separates you from the deadly gas. Only a madman could have created a weapon so misguided and so lethal. Totally fine. Let's read. Cleanse the room with fire. More importantly, can you close the doors? I don't think so. Let's find out. So 
didn't close the doors. Not really. Mechadens emits a screeching whine. See, if you do the fire thing, you can't get your little treasure in there. So that would have been bad. Okay, I do believe we are done. Oh, that's right, this one. There's nothing really here, though, is it? Oh, the helmet. Triple fin helmet. An additional gore attack per round deals 1d8 cold iron damage with plus 2 enhancement bonus to attack and damage rolls. This room with a collapsed floor was abandoned rather than repaired. Who wants the helmet? Who wants the helmet? Gimpy already has a gore attack. Bismuth, Bismuth killed, leaves everything. Mm. Bob? Bob? Oh, I'm sorry, that's backwards. Uh, that's a totem, that's inspired wisdom. You did it wrong. It's the floor. This is how you do it. Warg. Please excuse me. That was embarrassing. I meant to say. Jag. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Okay, so that. So Bob now has a gore attack to go along with his bite and claw to our bite attacks. There we go. And then we got to lose, boost them up a little bit higher. 16 versus 12. Why is his will saving throw at 17? to animals, good hope, quick resistance to Good hope, quick resistance three. So where's the friend to animals? Sacred. Oh. Is that because of the oracle stuff? Yeah, it must be. Did not know that. First time I really noticed that. Okay, so I think we're officially done. That was the last area, I think. Your last room. Up there. Up there. Okay, I think that's it. We've been everywhere. Okay, let's get out of here. Strength plus 11 what? <laughs> that's the plus 11 to damage, right? Yeah. When they hit stuff, they get a plus 11 damage to appropriate stuff. So in this case, the bite attack damage is 27 to 34, plus 26 total out of that. But strength. Yes, very strong wolves. They're big wolves. 
Oh, there. Annual companion level bonus, plus six, plus eight. I don't know where the plus six is coming from. It doesn't tell you. Mythical beast. <laughs> this stuff. Again, I don't know where the plus six is coming from. Or the actual plus eight, in all honesty. I mean, although he has a plus eight too. Okay, the other is plus eight. That's from being wolves, I think. They're special. But again, I don't know why what the plus six is from. Don't know. Plus six for being a good boy, apparently. The bestest boy, maybe. I think it. See, the wolves are slightly different. Lou is a, a ranger pet, and Bob is an oracle pet. So the way they come into being is a little different. Not much different, but maybe being an oracle pet is better. It looks like it is. I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know what, why there's such a big difference there. Oh, I got an army running around down here, it looks like. Okay, our army, little demon army coming up, troublemakers. Give me a friend's can. Sacred lands, I don't really care about doing that right now. Makeshift lab, that's just reagents there, I like to see the ancients. What's our corruption looking like? Come on, you pansy, well, not bad. get back in there and fight. We can actually wander around out here for a little bit longer. <coughs> so. Can we make it over there, though, is a question. Maybe. Let's see. One day. Next day has started. Okay, so. A brilliant little crusader army. Go crush these demons. zoomed in. The camera is zoomed in. What the hell? And it's locked. Hmm. The camera is zoomed in for some reason. So that's done. Oh, we're going to take a shot at this, uh, this fortress too. Is the fight? Yeah, it's... Most of the fights against this thing aren't really tough. Um, it depends on... It all depends on the numbers. Like, this is a, considered a level 9 army. So if the demon army isn't, you know, at least a 9, the fights are usually fairly pushovers. It, but it depends on what's in, actually in there too. The, what's actually as part of the enemy army has a lot to do with it and like this one this fight will be tougher no matter what because they've got a um, a general this big head right here that means this is a general and these are larger demons and stuff so this can be a slightly tougher fight but we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes Let's 
so again the camera is still I'm gonna have to restart the game on my break. Cultist fighters, cultists, these regular cultists, so we want to kill them if we can as fast as possible. I've got dretches too. I actually kill the dretches. Dretches can use a little stinky cloud that prevents our archers from doing their jobs. So many dretches. Clerics. Dwarves. Long girls. Oh look, you can smack them. That was a lot of damage for some reason. These are little called fallen knights, but they're technically demon knights. That's what they were sold to us as. Now they're gonna run away in fear, because that's what they do. These are hell knights. Go beat up on him. Oh look, lightning. And teleportation. So there's the dredges putting them in their stinky cloud. That's not a big deal there. Hey Gimpy, it is time to take a break. Yeah, I know. Oh, our archers can't Your shoot anybody. Break is in two hours. Because of those guys right in front of us. Let's see if we can kill them. That'll work. Now we can shoot people. Shoot the cultists. Kill the cultists. Clear or sorry, yeah, clerics. Ow. Stop it. Get another dwarves. Mongrels. Can't beat up on anybody because of the cloud. Get out of the cloud. Hell knights. Go kill the dredge. Come on, you pansy. Or make him run away. Get back here. in there and fight. Go back this way. Beat up on him. Smite chaos. Make them feel better. Summon a demon. Shit. Ow. Heal the cleric, please. Come on, you pansy. Get back in there and fight. them off the field. Clerics. Scares of the rocks. Ah, uh, kill them first. If we can kill everybody, these guys will disappear because they're summoned. Dwarves. Cloud. For some reason they don't care about the cloud, which is fine. Mongrels. They still can't attack. Stretch run away in fear. Come on, attack these guys. Again. How's the dredge doing? He's supposed to be feared. Get them out of there. Archers. Yeah, they're mostly dead now. Stop it. Okay, he's got his attack back. Get them out of the way. When he kills stuff, he gets to go again. They're special. Just in case. Archers. Send them out. There we go. And this is the clerics again. Oh, 
Get a free attack? No. Oh, what do they run away for? And go kill that. Hold on. Okay, so a little bit harder fight as expected, because it should have been they were a higher level army. And everybody's coming back. Good. Now we take control of this uh, little fort too. Okay, I haven't pushed the enemy back to the strait. The Crusaders came to a reluctant halt. Reluctant halt. On the bank opposite stood a large army of demons. Any attempt to cross would bring catat catastrophic losses. So the officers ordered the construction of a temporary fortification on the bank. If demons try to cross the strait, they will would meet a hostile reception, to say the least. Stuff. Let's see, look more armies now. The camera's messed up. Good fights. So, anyway. I'm going to take a quick break. They paid Heroes of Might and Magic for this mini game, or if they just stole it. It's not exact. It's not exact copy, so they didn't. I'm sure they just borrowed it. What you think? This is the only a game that's ever borrowed from from uh, Might and Magic. Scatness, welcome to the stream. It's pretty damn close. Uh, not, it's different enough. It's pretty different. Anyway, I gotta stand up, take, or sorry, I have to get up, stretch my legs, get some water, talk to Mrs. Gimpy real quick, and I'm gonna restart the game in the process because for some reason the camera's messed up. Never had that happen before. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that, and I just did save, correct? Yeah, save. Okay, so uh, be back in a few minutes. Game's gonna restart down. If you see a lot of frames dropping, that kind of stuff, that's okay. It'll be fine. Okay, so I'll be back shortly. Enjoy the dog video. Thanks for watching.